Why, hello, 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 hi, hello, yalla. It is me, it is I, small time Didi. You're a and these are your internets, and I'm back. Yalla, I'm trying to catch up with the season. That's why I'm bombarded. You're probably like, whoa, Rahadi, I know we're like, we missed you, girl, but like, has it ever been this serious? I want us to catch up so that we can start talking about it in relative real time. We can cackle and be like, oh my God, it can never be me when they drop the episodes on Friday. And I can't do that when I'm delayed because it's worn off. I hope there's no smoke coming at you guys. I have my coffee here. I'm tired. I'm always tired. You guys know that. Okay, let's get into it. Real Housewives of, who are they? Lagos. Uh, episode, uh, season two, episode three, review. This is a good season. It's a good season. But we knew that we knew like they deliver. Like, oh. why can't the others be like this? Maybe they because Libo now their first season it was like, but not really. It was still a good sell. Let me just get into it, okay? Doctor Ramal and Faith. Doctor Ramal, Ramal. I don't know. He's a hard watch for me. I, I, and I don't want to be like a hating ass bitch, even though like I, that's kind of my, like my thing. I don't want to be always, um, but he's making it hard. He's such a hard sell. He's at rehearsals for what? For what? Do you want to know what? <laughs> he's hosting a Botox party and he's rehearsing. You don't want to know what happened, so I won't bore you with it. Um, but anyway, I don't know. I don't even know where I was. That was a lot. But anyway, uh, he is having a rehearsal. Faith shows up. They have their rehearsal together because they're throwing this Botox party together. And they go outside to have a chat. They're asking each other, oh, what did you make of the ladies at Choma's thing? What did you make of this one? What did you make of that one? And Dr. Amal's like, I really enjoyed everybody. They both discussed that. They thought it was big of Toyin to come through and apologize and stuff. I'm like, everybody just wants to get him good with her. Why do you want to dress you or something? Because later down, Choma says something. And that's exactly how I felt. But I'll get into it when we come to that point. They think it's big of her. And then Dr. Ramal says, you know, he, he tried to get to know, um, what's her name? This bland one, man, that's La Caro, that looks like Caroline. The Caroline replacement. And he's like, no, she's cold. She's standoffish. Um, I thought she had said her name was Titi at first because I didn't hear what she said her name is. But she corrected me. She's rather like, you know, like, uh, about it, you know? I'm like, I wonder what the fuck that's about. But anyway, that's what happened. And then, uh, what's in Tiana. No, it's not Tiana. Tanya. Tanya. Because I wrote T. I don't know why I did that. Um, and the next scene with Tanya, she, she goes to her store. They all have stores. They all have a store of swords doing God knows what. Tanya goes to her store. She meets up with her manager. We see that she's actually a published author of uh, Kitty's book uh, that was inspired by her daughter, she says. So she went in to sign some of these copies that need to go out. And she sits down for a chat with a friend of hers who also happened to be her manager. She's filling her in on all the girls. She's like, no, so far, I feel like I'm, I'm finding my feet. I'm getting to know everybody. You know, I did catch some stray bullets from... Iabo, because I look like, you know, Caroline, who was with them the last season, but it really was not that much of a bother to me, as well as that she's like, the person she can't figure out is Faith, because Faith doesn't talk ma much. That's how I feel about her, though. But we're only two episodes in, so let me give some grace, yeah? And, you know, but that's pretty much what we see there. Then we see Iabo and her daughter... Priscilla, I don't think her and I say this name the same and I can't say it the way she says it and that's her child But I read it as Priscilla. I think she says Pers I don't know what she says, but we she she's at home with her daughter Let me tell you about somebody who's like a proper housewives watcher, right? This dynamic isn't that common. I guess 
the first time we saw something like this was when the Hadid sisters were on Real Housewives of Beverly as an extension of their mom, Yolanda. Yolanda Foster, who's now back to being Hadid because, you know, she's smart. Um, on the show, they were coming of age. So having her on there with them, guide them and stuff because you're a housewife. Part of it is showing us what you do as a mom and things like that, right? This dynamic is what I like to see in my housewives and stuff. Because a lot of the times when your mom is older, right, and you you bring in your mom instead of your daughter who's of a mature age still, right? What happens in those dynamics is that you find a mama Joyce, and that's on Real Housewives of Atlanta, Candy's mom, who wants to firm at the mouth, talk shit, talk at everybody however she wants, and expect everybody in the room to be respectful of her. Right, and if you say something back to her mom, Candy will be like, You don't speak to my mama like that, but your mom is fucking unhinged. So, anytime an elderly lady comes into the friend group and they don't know how to toe the line or is invited to hang out with the friend group and isn't pleasant to have around, it shifts that dynamic and it doesn't make for great television because Oksalayo, we're all grown women at this table. Right, all the women of Atlanta are well over 40 or close to being Sonia, the new one, or whatever. But back when Mama Joyce was featuring a lot more uh, uh, prominently, they're all a little bit older. So, Gimosadi, you're also a grown woman, fine, you're Candy's mom, but don't talk to me like, like that, like, don't talk to me crazy. So, that dynamic never works. This works whenever she brings Priscilla over with the other ladies, she's not too far apart with trauma in age. They have things in common. They move the same on social media. It It's effortless. Like it blends. I love the friendship that they have. I love that she's so happy for her mom and her mom is so in love. I love Iabo's makeup in the scene. I love it. This is the first time in a while, if ever, that I've seen everything match. Iabo's always looking like she's wearing a shade too light up here. And sometimes in the confessionals, I extend the grace because I'm like, maybe it's the light. Before they had the lights on, they couldn't see that they weren't blending properly. The same with Miriam. Miriam has got this look. By the way, the girls are slaying in the confession of faith. Faith. That like movement-y situation she has going on with that black ensemble she has going on over there. Baby, the girls are delivering in the confessionals. And that's because they get styled for the confessionals. When they have to show up to scenes dressing themselves in regular, they can look very like cheap accessible why do you look like didi what but anyway they're looking really good her makeup she's so beautiful and brown here oh my god guys yeah was a gorgeous woman yeah was a gorgeous woman she got her teeth done they seem to fit her in her mouth they're not like yeah oh my god she's a gorgeous woman also did she get her body done She's dressing like somebody who just bought a body. Like, you know, you can't believe in the Benin gang. They all dress like that in the Benin gang. Um, Toyin. Toyin goes over to the doctor with that fucking husband of hers who just annoys me when he shows up on my screen. I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, are you a criminal? Because you're not fucking Darth Vader. Okay. What's the cultivation of mystique for? Because it's not that impressive. I think she did a reveal on her Instagram of his face on her birthday. I don't know if she kept it up. I don't even bother. First of all, he he's not interesting enough for us to want to know his face. He's just creepy. It's like she's walking around with a... Is it a Turks Demi? What's it called? It's like she's walking around with a, a dead something. And I mean that. Like... As, oh my god oh, i don't like it i don't get it i don't like it i don't get it i'm like why it's not interesting it doesn't we, i don't experience this oh i really want to see who's behind there i'm like who has the money because if it's trading then i don't give a shit who's behind that mask he ain't going but anyway, they go to the doctors. She has like severe, like chronic neck pain and stuff for a stretch of like two years, give or take. And she really needs to know what's going on now because she's just been like trying to medicate it with painkillers and stuff. 
which is dangerous because that's how addiction starts. Um, but she goes there and then they tell her that she basically is going to need an implant or something because something about her discs here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's more serious than she thought, basically. And if she gets the surgery, she's probably going to have to be like, you know, uh, reliant on a wheelchair or something for a stretch of three months, I think they're saying. And then they give her a neck brace to go and off she goes. I can't stand this husband. Choma meets up with Laura. This brown thing she's wearing reminds me of something I think Bonang has worn. But Bonang's one had Gucci all over it and I could be wrong. But another housewife has worn something like this. And I think it was Giselle Bryant of Real Housewives of Potomac. Except hers didn't look nice. Choma looks nice. Also, we never know what the weather is in Lagos. Have you guys realized? Like, if we had to go off what the girls are wearing, whose outfit are we going to run with to determine what the weather is? Because she shows up looking very, like, autumn, right? Very wintered out. She's there for a bit. She's there to meet up with Laura. Laura's running late. Laura comes through in a jean bogat dress. And guys, I... <sighs> You're going to think I'm being hard on them. But the thing is, like, we watch the shows for escapism, right? We want to see the the glitz, the glamour, the we don't have that. But your Jean Bogart dress that I've seen at the she end over there. Some stockings. Come on now. Crazy. Love Laura's confessional look. She's wearing like a suit. It's so Sarafina for me. Like, I'm like, she's so cute. I love it. I love it so much. She gets there uh, to meet up with um, Choma. And Choma's like, you know, at Miriam's thing, Miriam brought up that some of us are just pretending to be cool and we're not. And I was like, you know what? I'll make my own time to sit down with Laura and we'll iron our things out and find a way around our stuff. I don't need anybody else telling me what my relationship with somebody else has to be when they have their own things to work through, which is fair, I guess. Um, and then she's like, Laura, who knows Toyin very well, obviously is like, you and Toyin seem to have made up. I actually think you and Toyin could have a good relationship on account of you probably, I don't know, like they like the same things. And she's like, she also likes to be helpful and things like that. And then uh, Choma then says, no, not after what happened last day. She's like, well, a lot was going on with her. You know, we learned that she had been pregnant. Choma goes, was she? I was like, baby, baby, why is Choma being this person? And then I remember, you know what I'm going to do? Y'all know I'm a stay-at-home child. So I think I'll have season one just playing as I do stay-at-home child things because I need to be reminded of something. I remember trauma. Oh, my last time back. Give me a minute. And I'm back. I remember trauma having a rather off putting, nasty streak toward the end there when her and Carol were falling apart and it was starting to come out that they were like in the big of the big of production, concocting ways to like ice this one out and do this the messages she was sending in the group chat she had this rant that she had in the car that was like steeped in a lot of classism that she reached for rather easily i remember this about her i i said the last time i'm like i don't understand is it just the fashions that like diana is so mad at, at this lady because it's just it's her reaction is disproportionate to what we were shown. And again, how they chopped up that last scene when they were in Dubai, when the fight happened and things like that, how things were just edited at the end there. I'm not sure if production, sorry, is doing things to protect her because production does it, right? They'll pick a favorite. They'll decide that you bring in more ratings. If, if we do something to you and you feel like you don't want to come back for the next season, we might lose a chunk. And she's a younger audience, right? So there might be 
um, more willing to grow with her on the show. The other women are older. The women may not have that kind of time on their hands to tune in and do whatever. But maybe, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm only in episode three. You guys are an episode ahead of me. Okay. But she says, I don't think she was pregnant. This really put Laura off a guitar. Because even in the confessional, Laura's like, why would she do that? Like, who does that? You know? I mean, Laura, you'd be surprised. People say and do stuff and lie. Tiana's suggesting that Choma lied about her. Which would, I mean, mm, but then why apologize? As Toyin, why apologize then to her? Right? Laura then also says, you know, that apology, I felt backed and bullied into it. In a sense, I agree. It's not bigger person shit. A bigger person calls my line because they have direct line. Unless I block them, then they get a mutual person like Yabo to do that communication, right? To be the buffer. When you want to make a mental somebody, you call them, you go to where they're comfortable going, one-on-one, -on -one, you sit across from them, you explain to them what had happened and not to excuse your behavior or justify it. But because there's no, trauma doesn't seem to understand where this is coming from, explain what happened and then apologize that even though I was mad, I should not have like, you know, lunged at you like that or rather try to attack you like that. That's what you're supposed to do in an environment where they can say what they want to say back. This shit that Toyin did and was encouraged to do by Iabo just showing up to the event. That's almost you creating a moment or making sure that she's not going to say no. In the same way that your no good boyfriends like to propose to you in public when you and or you guys have never discussed this thing right trying to pressure you to say yes because saying no would embarrass him right why doesn't he do it at home right the, the guys who propose to you at your day of graduation say no bitch say no why why are you gonna do this or that like, men really think there's something special. I fucking hate the grad proposals. I fucking hate them. In the next scene with Miriam meeting up with Toyin, and then Faith is going to show up later, but they're sitting and they're chatting. And she's like, okay, you and Choma seem to be making amends and blah, blah, blah. And she says, I don't think Choma knows why I'm mad. And nobody knows. No, and you know we don't know. How are you letting this narrative run that you're just this hating ass fashion girl who wants to be the only fashion girl? Like, Faith shows up. I'm convinced Faith just doesn't know how to dress. That fit didn't make sense. She arrives with her bodyguard, Ugh, baby. <laughs> Miriam is like, what the fuck? Miriam's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Me too, Miriam. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Toyin is like, they excuse him. Like, they can't deal with, like, him just hovering. Because that should be annoying. Especially because for this non-person who is Faith, come the fuck on. And they excuse him. Toyin is like, no, don't worry. Like, I won't beat her up. Like, it's not, it's not that serious. <laughs> And he goes away because she doesn't need security. That's why he goes away. Like, what the hell? They get to chatting. And then Toyin says, you know, I don't know what you were told about me because I heard, you know, nasty things were being said about me at the spa thing. Miriam's like, oh, my God, blah, blah, blah. And Toyin's like, oh, just shut up, bitch. And she's like, she says she's loyal to me, but she didn't tell me that these things were being said about me. She's another one that expects a level of loyalty that she didn't give to Laura. The kind of loyalty she's wanting in every other girl, she threw away in Laura. She wants all of this, like, you know, loyal to a fold, like, kiss the ring type bullshit. She thinks she's Teresa fucking Judas. That's another delusional bitch over there in New Jersey. Like, no, no. Do you give this much to anybody except, you know, the masked man? No. No, you don't. So, what is, like, Miriam would essentially just have been a shit stirrer. I get it. Like, 
It's like if she's saying people need to reach out to each other and make amends. Surely that extends to Choma and Toyin as well. What's it look like when Miriam now goes to Toyin and she's like, oh, Choma said this to you at that spa thing. So essentially you put together that like health wellness thing to gather tea to take back to the godfather, Crystal Wang. Like, bitch, whatever. Uh, they get to talking about, you know, Faith, where she's coming from. She's married to some man whom she still speaks very highly of. It reminds me of Caroline. It's giving my life source and my lifestyle is still tied to that man. I'll say everything and anything nice about him and I'll never put him down. The shit you women do where you break up with somebody and it was probably not all like, you know, uh, rainbows and roses and stuff, but you try to put them in good light still. I don't get it. Kimora, uh, uh, Kimora Lee Simmons did that with Russell. It's only in the last year where she's trying to tell us who the fuck he is. Bitch, everybody else been said that's who he is. You were the one acting like you guys are the world's best co-parents. This thing that you guys do where you try to be the bigger per ah, it's like Whatever. Faith arrives. Toyin is mad at Miriam. Eva goes to visit Miriam. Um, they are seeming to be forging their own thing. This is going to upset Tiana. Toyin is going to be busy. <laughs> I'm surprised considering, you know, the fertility issues that um, Tiana has just had. That Miriam didn't bring this up with Toyin. Unless she has off camera or Toyin knows what's going on. But she invites Miriam over. She has a cousin over. It seems to be like a Sunday night where she hosts people. She's, she seems to be a very good host actually. Um, Iavo says that. And they sit down and they have a chat. And she's chatting to her cousin who... Um, recently welcomed twins by surrogacy because she struggled for eight years to conceive and she just went that option, which is not a very common thing in our cultures across the board. I remember Candy, again, back to Atlanta, her, her youngest was also by way of surrogacy because her pregnancy before that, because she's also a woman of a particular age, right? She had Riley when she was much younger, raised her mid Todd when Riley was already like this like grown teenager. Um, they had Ace and Blaze. And I think Blaze is the youngest or the other way around. But her youngest came by surrogacy. And when they were going through that process with uh, Dr. Jackie of Real uh, of Married to Medicine, you know, Todd was also like, you know, I'm from I'm from New York and, and like a black area and it's not really these aren't the chats. These this is not what you used to. So it's not even just like a a people who are like us on the continent. It's just a thing, right? There's still a lot of shame around discussing issues of um infertility, issues of like fertility issues and, and things like that because we just are especially because we like to put the blame on women as to why the baby isn't coming you know we like to do things of that nature so it's a difficult conversation Miriam wants another child so her child can have a sibling and what have you and this is something that she's considering exploring because she's struggling you know um and, and I, I wish a while with that really I do Dr. Ramal's practicing his entrance again. Why are they putting me through this? I, you guys, I suffer from like severe secondhand embarrassment. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. I, I have to forward past some scenes because I just can't sit through them. But because I need to come and talk to you guys about them, I'm having to end like a, like, but like it's still hard on my psyche making me watch this why did this make our televisions you guys are wrong man whatever it's the day of the botox party who arrives first miriam miriam arrives first and then <sighs> tiana it's not tiana tanya 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 arrives um shortly after or a while after i don't know Nobody's serving them in terms of like nobody has welcomed them with drinks. They've done a whole lot except the basics. And people make this mistake a lot, right? Like you 
you faff and fuss about the flowers, faff and fuss about the person who's going to be playing the music, everything but the basic. Who's saying hello to these people? Who's saying, hi, ma'am, welcome, sit over there? Who's doing that? There was none of that day to sit there, look lost for a bit. Iaba arrives again, dressed like she just purchased that body. And it's not judgment. I like it. I like she's in her sexy bag. And maybe she didn't even purchase a body. Maybe it's because she's in love and she's feeling herself and she's feeling sexy and whatever. And it's showing in how, because we do that, right? It's the subtle things. But either way, I love it. Again, the, the, her, the shade that she's wearing, Uncle Shaw, Uncle Shaw, but really. Um, she gets there and Yabo. I said, did she do her body? Baby, I'm so wrong. Oh, and she apologizes. Um, Iabo, because she must have, have, at this point, have decided that she rates Tanya. She apologizes for being harsh with her because she, like, reminds her of Caroline. And, like, Tanya's just like, yeah, okay, cool. Because Tanya's just like, I just didn't care that much. Like, I, I really didn't care. Choma arrives again. What's the weather in Lagos? What's the weather? Do you know what I think sometimes happens? I think because she's her billboard, she's like, this is my fucking fate. And if it hails, if it snows, if the sun visits the earth, oh, that's her fate. That's the fit she said she's wearing. That's the fit she's running with. The weather is not going to tell her which fit. She already decided. I think that's what happens with her. And I know people like her who are like, nah, I don't care that it's cold. And I, I decided I'm wearing this mini skirt, Lanka. So, my son, you know? Laura arrives. We barely see much of what she's wearing, but I can tell it's a lot of dress. It's like a, it's a gown. Uh, Toyin also arrives in a lot of dress, you know? Everybody's sitting where, at this point, I'm seeing glasses around. So I'm guessing they started serving them at some point. They're waiting three hours later. Everybody's like, waste faith, waste faith. This, this tardiness is so disgusting and uncultured to me. I can't deal with it. Faith again, this is probably where she should wear her train. I don't really think so. I think, I don't think people know what to wear to wear in, in this place. I don't think so. On this particular show, they don't know. They just, that's the dress they want to wear. They don't care what the event is. It's the dress they want to wear. She arrives with her mom and everybody's like, the only reason I'm not dragging her and telling her shit just because she's here with her mom and I need to respect that. And that's that shit I was telling you about. Now we didn't get good television. Okay. They're sitting there, they're like, where's doctor? They're just hearing the violin and the piano go, why are we trying to be people whom we aren't? Oh, also, why did we go out into the world and we're like, oh, we're going to bring this home and like put these people on? Like, no. Have some Afro beats playing in that bitch and do some Botox. Girl, what? Like, yo, guys, Nangu, Billy Elliot. Guys, let your kids be who they want to be. This dude want to be Billy Elliot so bad. He practiced without the gajanga. He had a, 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 a thing. And it was like longer. Like it, it was like, it was more than him. And he's entering and wants to be belly, like I said. And it's not landing. None of it is landing. It's all, I have to watch it so I can come tell you guys what happened. He's like stepping on his thing that, oh, Jesus. But my dude thinks he killed it. So that's all that. Let your kids be who they want to be so we don't end up here. If your kid says, this is what I want to do, don't tell him to go be a doctor and do Botox because he's going to want to do Botox and be a theater kid at the same time. It's like, bitch, this is not game. You said we're doing Botox. What is this, right? He does that and then he does another awkward cha-cha-cha with faith that they practice, baby. I'm like, yeah, ne. I do want his confidence, though. I think he should bottle that. Yeah. Yeah. Or himself. It would be the same package. But anyway, um, he... 
does the demonstration of the botox thing does some educational stuff around botox that the ladies seem to appreciate laura offers herself up as a guinea pig because i think she's done it before she says all the other ladies claim that they've never had to do botox okay girl um anyway she gets her shots and stuff and that's pretty much it i can't remember anything crazy really happening the ladies dance they have a good time dr amal takes credit for everything says faith was only responsible for that little dance they did i need him to take credit for the ladies not being hosted properly when you eventually learn that it, they were underwhelmed this shit was actually not as cool as you thought it was own it own it as all of you still because you now under the impression that it was a success so you're wanting to make it a dr ramar production solely own it like once you learn that it was actually cringe and we were all like what the fuck own the cringe own the you not being a good host as well all right Mwah.